The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Pro. We're back at SWAC, the Southwest Ag Conference with uh, Horst Bonner, Ontario uh, Soybean Specialist. Sir, thanks for hanging in with us. Yeah, very good. Thanks again. Hey, I want to talk a little bit about corn now. Um, obviously, you're a soybean. Yeah, wait, stop, stop. Oh. We're not talking about corn. Anyway, oh, oh, all right, a little bit. No, you're a soybean specialist, but you have, quite often, you're following corn. And um, corn hybrids are getting bigger and bigger. Yes. A lot of talk about how to manage that yes. residue. Right. Um, and there's so much more of it. Um, and creating challenges for soybeans. Um, from your perspective, you know, what type of challenges is it creating now? And how, how's it changed over the years? Right, so it really has changed over the years and it seems to be year specific as well. And the obvious things that have changed are that we have bigger corn crops, right? I mean, it's just a different scenario if you have a 220 bushel crop versus 150, obviously, right? There's just a lot more residue. The other thing is the corn stalks are tougher now than they were in the past. And part of that is simply due to the fact that they're greener in the, in the fall, right? So they, they uh, have not broken down as much. So last winter, so uh, going into the spring of 2015, no-till, it was tough planting into those corn stalks. And the reason for that is because we had a big winter, right? A uh, cold winter. And the fall previous, the corn crop was pretty wet, right? It froze right away, and then to top it all off, it was dry in April. And so you, were, you had the scenario of, of corn stalks that hadn't broken down much. Interestingly enough, I think this Not winter, different. totally different, different, right? But what we learned or, or kind of was solidified in a lot of people's minds was that this heavy, heavy corn residue is, is a problem, right? With respect to plant stands, it's harder to get the right number of plants per acre when you've got all that residue with the equipment that we have. And the other thing is, of course, we had that big frost on May 23rd, and uh, if you've got a lot of residue there, the frost damage uh, is, is much worse than if you have some black dirt. So that uh, frustrated a lot of growers in terms of the, the uh, performance of, of no-till, right? I guess and a lot of growers are making decisions. It's going to be a little different this year, obviously, than last year. But you, you, you said an interesting thing in your presentation. You know, basically, you know, that you kind of consistently get your best soybean yields after a little scratching. Mm -hmm. Talk about your approach and, you know, maybe some things that growers need to think about when they're deciding what type of tillage to run in front, you know, uh, they should be doing, whether they're running row cleaners, strip till, whatever. Right. So uh, the first thing you, you have to understand about soybeans, and it, it's, it's, the, it's the wonderful thing about soybeans, is that they're so adaptive, and that's why no-till even works, right? And so the situation is very different for a 150 bushel crop versus a 200, 220 bushel crop. In other words, what I'm saying, uh, what we, we did a pretty extensive research project with the University of Guelph and, and some others if, a few years ago, a three-year study. We had different levels of residue removal and seven different uh, tillage practices and a drill versus a planter and all kinds of good stuff. At the end of the day, you know what we really learned from that study is that there's no problem with no-till. Ah, the no-till did just as well essentially is anything else. The only real uh, problem we had with no-till is when we uh, chopped the stalks and left them on the surface and then tried to use a drill uh, in that scenario. There we lost up to five bushels. When we used a, a row unit planter and pushed that residue away, it was uh, gained back uh, that yield deficit. But the real point I'm getting at here is that those sites were kind of a normal 170-ish kind of corn crop. And it was we did not have those kind of years that we had this previous year. So the scenario basically is that the, the research numbers are pretty amazing that there really is no problem with no-till. 
And yet, practically, we know every now and then there's everybody, a pro everybody there's a problem. Yeah, well, and this is it, right? It's a year like 2015, and that gets solidified in our thinking, and then we want to do something about it. I'll tell you, in terms of research plots, what I'm doing is some vertical tillage, and, and we started that in 2004 with some, some trials, and we've been playing with it ever since. And the average response we're getting is about two bushels. Whether we do it in the fall, the spring, or spring and fall, whether we do it once, or twice, blah, blah, it's about two bushels. So is that enough to really go and say we should all do it? Hmm. It's a tough sell, right? The reason I'm doing it to be honest with you, is because we get more consistent, even plant stands, and that takes away some of the variability in some of the other things that I'm trying to test, including nutrients and blah, blah, blah. But it's really not a big yield winner. It's small, uh, it's real, but it's not a huge one. So, to uh, summarize in terms of where my head is at with this tillage stuff, uh, a lot of it comes down to uh, soil type and drainage, right? Of course, if, if your field is not well, well tiled, you're going to have more of a response to some tillage and dealing with the residue. And the other thing is, you know, it depends a lot on, I think, your corn yield, right? If you are one of these 200 plus guys consistently, Huh, yeah, it may be time to think about dealing with, with that residue. And it may be as simple as not uh, buying another piece of equipment in terms of a tillage piece of equipment, but going from a drill to a planter unit with even just one good coulter in front of the row unit, pushing that away, not planting on top of the corn rows, right? The corn balls or the root balls are, are, are the problem. If you can stay away from that, it may be as simple as that, and, and it, it will solve your problems, right? Well, I think 2016 is going to be a little different year this year. We're going to got a lot of yeah. break down. We've got the, um, everything sizing up well. Um, uh, we'll see what happens in 2016, but I'm sure we'll have this conversation again. Now. Well, there's no question that this I issue of tillage and, uh, you know, the, the, the real problem with just talking too much about the benefits of tillage is that we can't forget about the real issues of soil erosion, nutrient movement. Um, we don't want to go backwards. Right? Nobody wants to beat up the soil more than necessary. So in my way of thinking, there's got to be a balance, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe vertical tillage is a reasonable compromise that works nine out of 10 times, right? Hey. Thanks for your insights as always. Thank you for the invitation.